Hello and welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray and Cinema 4D, made to guide you through the basics and get you up and running with rendering in no time. In this video, we'll check out how to adjust our render settings to find the perfect balance between quality and render time when we're rendering still images. Don't forget to download our project files from the link in the video description so you can explore the scene at your own pace. Now, let's get started. We've prepared this simple exterior shot. And so far, we've been rendering at a lower resolution than usual, 960 by 540 pixels, leaving quite a bit of noise in the picture. This was fine for doing some tests and setting up the overall mood of the scene. Let's begin by creating a new render setting set and giving it a name, so we can easily identify which ones we want to use when we have multiple sets. Start by choosing V-Ray as the renderer and then change the resolution to full HD or 1920 by 1080 pixels. Next up, let's discuss the image samplers. By default, we're set to use the progressive sampler and we can set a time limit. This might result in a noisy final image if it finishes rendering too quickly. We can also set it to a certain time limit, say we've got exactly two hours and V-Ray will render out the clearest result possible for that time. If we leave it at zero, V-Ray will render until it hits the noise threshold set above. If we set both the noise threshold and time limit to zero, it will cause V-Ray to keep on rendering indefinitely, meaning we'll have to step in and stop the rendering manually. Let's set the noise threshold to 0.005, which will give us a nice clean image, and then head on over to the Global Illumination tab. The main engine is always set to brute force, and we have options for the secondary Global Illumination engine. The default combo of brute force and light cache works well for most scenarios, and we don't often need to tweak any of the settings here. For some indoor scenes, we might need to boost the subdivisions for the light cache to capture even finer details for smaller light sources. Sometimes for final images, we might need more control over the output, and we can set that up with the help of render elements. Once we have the render elements manager open, the fastest way to set up all the main passes is by dragging the beauty category to the render elements list. Keep in mind, this could slightly increase the overall render times. At this point, we need to make sure to save our work. We can do this from the V-Ray image output rollout by picking a file path and specifying a file format. Depending on our needs, we can have a single file containing all the render elements like a VR image or a multi-layered EXR, or we could go for a more traditional file format like a JPEG or PNG and have all the render elements saved as separate files. Alternatively, we could also use Cinema 4D's save dialog. Okay, let's turn them off for now and start a production render. I fast-forwarded the rendering process, but you can see the time it took in the status bar below. A bit over two hours. It was worth the wait, as we can now appreciate the detail and clarity of the render. Now that we're satisfied with the result, we can save the image from the floppy disk icon in the V-Ray frame buffer. This allows us to save just the beauty pass, all the passes separately or all of them together as an EXR or V-Ray image file. But what happens when we don't have that much time to render the image? Well, we can do a few tricks to find a balance between render time and quality. First off, let's raise the noise threshold to 0.01, which will add some noise to our image. But don't worry though, we'll use a denoiser to get rid of that in our final image. Remember though, if there's too much noise, we might end up losing some detail and clarity in our image. Let's start a render and speed up the process once more. You can see that the denoiser jumps in right after the first passes, but it's not quite good enough yet. It took slightly over 1 hour and 11 minutes, which is a lot less time than our previous render. We have a nice and clean result, and the quality of our image is more than satisfactory. Let's make a copy of our render settings set.
and explore another option for our image sampler, known as bucket rendering. Depending on the scene and the level of quality you're aiming for, you might want to increase the subdivisions or lower the noise threshold, but they're pretty well balanced for general use. So we're better off resetting them to their default settings by right-clicking on one of the arrows. This mode is similar to the previous one, but it uses small squares called buckets, and they move on once they meet the settings you have set and render that small portion of the image. I'll also make their size a bit smaller so they calculate smaller parts of the image and move faster. Let me also turn off the denoiser, as we won't need it with our current render settings, and start another production render. We can now see the buckets begin revealing the image. In my case, there are 32 buckets, which match the number of threads or logical cores of the computer we're rendering on, if we don't have the time to wait for the image to be computed only on our machine, and we have access to other machines or a dedicated render farm to help with the calculations, we could use distributed rendering. This connects all render nodes that have V-Ray render server running and sends over the scene and all its assets. This way, their buckets will transfer to our machine and help us render the image that much faster. Initially, we'll see our machine's colorful buckets start calculating the image, and then all the remaining buckets from the other render nodes. We can see each bucket has the label from the machine it belongs to and a color assigned to the specific render node. And this way, despite the high render settings, our image is finished in the shortest time so far. Distributed rendering is undoubtedly a big plus, but what if you only have access to a single workstation? In that situation, you can use Chaos Cloud, which has hundreds of machines ready to go. Let me turn off distributed rendering and navigate to the Chaos Cloud button located in the main V-Ray menu. All we need to do is click on Export and Submit, and this will send the VR scene to the cloud, ready for rendering. A page will pop up where we can give our project a name, change the resolution, choose a camera we'd like to render, and then we can submit it to the render queue. The upload time will depend on the file size, and when it's done, we can see the job lined up and ready to start. On the right side, we can see our settings and almost instantly a machine will pick it up and start rendering the scene. We can see a status bar with our progress and a render preview right in front of us. One of the great benefits of Chaos Cloud is that we can keep working locally without any loss of resources while our image is being rendered. There are different machines with different specs, so the overall speed of rendering can vary. But as you can see, this shot took just over 20 minutes, and we can preview the final result straight in our browser. If you're satisfied with it, we can now download a zip file with all the passes and masks we've set up. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now, you should have learned the most important render settings and a few different ways we can render a final image, depending on the quality you need and the time you have. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos from our Getting Started series for V-Ray for Cinema 4D, or take a look at our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon.